Hello friends, welcome back to product and brand management. Till now, we have tried to build up a structure around how strategically we will be able to develop brand equity and that is what we have tried to dwell upon. Those are the aspects which we have been wondering on. Last we talked about brand audit and brand research. We talked about some methodologies to find out what customer thinks, how to reach to the customer's heart, to understand what kind of uh, actions, programs would have been implemented by the successful brands, how they would have become so, so ingrained in our lives. And, and before that, we have talked about brand elements and brand value chain, not to mention we have wondered about language perspective and so on. Now, let us look at this scenario from the side of taking it from the side of a pyramidical structure to chain structure to an architectural perspective. And, and you see, uh, this we would be focusing upon with reference to if you look at a brand manager or a person at the hem of the affairs on steering brands, how that person or let us say team of people would be designing the complete journey of a brand basically, what they would be thinking how systematically they are trying to foresee where would they go or where would they take a brand or let us say associate with other brands, secondary associations we have talked about earlier as well, how they will carry it forward in a structured manner. So, we will be looking at brand architecture strategies with the perspective of a brand architecture a design format and we would be using several examples to understand it conceptually. But here I should remind you that you must continuously carry forward a thought that someone in the initial most phase of an organizational inception or a product inception and the beginning of a brand's journey is thinking in an architectural with an architectural perspective as a designer as an architect who is actually structuring things i'll i'll just open it up for you how uh, it happens and i'll explain the structure first and then we will go to brand portfolio and then i'll carry along few other subjects which are very relevant for this understanding so look at this slide Look at this structure in front of you, a map of brand architecture strategies and decisions wherein brand architecture is at the hem and it emanates the you know development of a brand architecture strategy that is actions, the path which a brand is going to take in due course of time for a long, long time. When, when we say strategy, try to decipher one thing that it is for a longer, longer time. And we have already talked about competition, the line perspective and several other perspectives. Here again I would be taking you back towards line and depth perspective wherein this time we would be uh, trying to understand it with the with reference to brands along with the products, a brand being a product and so on. I will just open it up for you. So, so here strategy means a long term path. Then there is an element of brand portfolio. Portfolio, uh, you know, in a simplistic fashion, you know, a collection of all the brands within a bouquet. That is where brand portfolio comes in. I'll be talking about uh, this with a definitional perspective as well. Then we will be going for brand hierarchies, how it happens, and somewhere you would realize that it can be structurally developed can be thought of. Some visionary does that or visionaries they do that. 
many a times as per the need of the hour when we start growing when we start excelling it happens also but then also we have to develop a hierarchical structure that is what one has to understand if it happens then how to convert it into a structure which is meaningful and if we are going step by step how we have to steer it then comes in corporate branding one of the most interesting subjects basically how because because we have been wondering on how tatas and patanjali and levers you know they have grown into corporate brands infosys and so many others and then when we talk of strategic perspective then next element is brand potential because we are talking of long term path driven by a vision we have something in mind how this world should remember a, a brand and how this uh, world should keep on receiving this brand in form of the products or whatever offerings the brand offers then in terms of extensions strategy in terms of extensions and when i say strategy just open it up as developing a brand architecture strategy structural strategy specifying brand elements then again we are going to use elements all along and then for hierarchies definitely when there is a hierarchy there is a level and then there are design principles which we will be talking of and then in terms of potential how vision is associated with that as i said and then what are the boundaries what is the uh, what is the element of positioning which i will be mentioning briefly to expand upon this we will be taking several examples and but one or two universally uh, you know uh, understandable examples carried along throughout the discussion let's see what is in store with us now you see when we talk of brand architecture strategy it helps marketers determine which products and services to introduce and which brand names logos symbols and you know what else is to be applied to new and existing products basically how how all those things which we have discussed should come in front of us that is that is the motive what the box should carry as a name as a symbol how it should be recognized as simple as that now the role of brand architecture is you know otherwise it is multifold but broadly let's look at two perspectives one is to clarify brand awareness it's a very simple kind of an element you know improving consumers understanding and communicate similarity and differences between individual products and services so differentiation and remember since the time we have started discussing brand differentiation is a is a key element which we have been focusing upon then next is improving brand image objective is always enhancing brand equity that means the value for the customer for the potential customers as well as the stakeholders so maximize you know improving brand image means maximizing transfer of equity between brand and individual products and services to improve trial and repeat purchase and so on so much so that that the story should go on you should come by yourself ask for a particular name buy the product feel happy now again developing a brand architecture strategy requires several steps but three major steps are defining brand potential in terms of the market footprint articulating the vision what did you imply when you named this particular product as you named what did you have in mind so are we able to you know can we articulate the vision in terms of because vision is represented by the product and the service which we are offering to our customers if we have a vision to create an organization disseminating education for all so does it resonates with as far as what do we say about our institute or or uh, education portal whichever way we are going ahead defining brand boundaries crafting brand positioning we have just talked about that now identifying brand extension opportunities here opportunities is the keyword to look for 
scope of brand development to look for that where can I use the same name for going on for let us say related product or many a times unrelated product also. That means am I able to expand the family of the product? Would I be able to expand the category of the product as such? And we have talked about families, categories, lines, widths and so on. So, so uh, keep remembering that branding new products and services. Now, for example, let us take Volkswagen. English it is written as V O L K S wagon, Volkswagen, but it is pronounced as Volkswagen. So, now and I, you all know that. So, now the goal of this organization is to offer attractive, safe, and environmentally sound vehicles which can compete in an increasingly tough market and set world standards in their respective classes. Product class. Vision to make this world a mobile sustainable place with access to all the citizens. This vision can it be translated into the products and services which Volkswagen is offering. That is the mainstay of our discussion. Keep, keep that thing in mind and keep that structure in mind which I have just shown you. I will be showing you that structure at least 3-4 times more. Now core values, accountability, teamwork, servants attitude that means uh, developing an accessibility to service, offering service as if we are uh, there for you and integrity. You would say that these are generic fundamental values which any organization should bear, but the point is who is able to exemplify those in terms of their products and services that is a major question. The guiding principle, the development of sustainable, connected, safe and tailored mobility solutions for future generations. Now, you see there are several other elements, then there is a new group strategy, new auto mobility for generations to come. Volkswagen group you know has been significant driver of this transformation and accelerate its realignment from vehicle manufacturer to a leading global software driven mobility provider. Now incorporating technology into what they are going, you see somewhere, someday someone would have imagined that this time would come and that is what specifically I am mentioning uh, when I talk of architecture. So, how you would integrate things, how you would integrate processes, how you would go along, alignment, Volkswagen group is rigorously reanalyzing itself and building up the new competencies. In addition to software development and the capability of autonomous driving, this also applies to areas such as battery technology, battery recycling we are going into a world wherein EVs would be the future. They have been working upon this. Someone thought of that. Someone would have thought of this transformation few decades back and that is precisely when we are talking of brand architecture. This also resonates with our thought process in terms of product line, in terms of product innovation in terms of design thinking, we have talked about that. But that is an ingrained part of brand architecture because that product is Volkswagen and that is what precisely is the point that line in terms of product or let us say brand line that comes to a situation together sometime and I will be showing you that how it happens. You see this is Volkswagen. So, you, you can recognize all these logos and we have talked about them and, and you can recognize the products under each logo or under each brand which Volkswagen has you know under its umbrella. So, this is keep this structure in mind, keep the structure of you know brand architecture in mind which is now in front of your screen and let me carry forward with the discussion with other elements and I will coming back to this once again. Till this stage just think in terms of strategy, the first element which we have opened up. Now before I go ahead I should because, because I am mentioning that continuously and it is imperative for us to understand that somewhere there is a relationship between product line and brand line. And there is a matrix structure which can explain this to us. You see the brand product matrix, it is interesting, it is not complicated at all, 
one must think of this. See, broad, brand product matrix uh, uh, puts forth wherein to characterize the brand architecture strategy of a firm, one useful tool you know comes in form of this matrix and it is a graphical representation of all the brands and the products. And on the vertical axis you can see in this matrix is brands and the you know horizontal axis is products. The, the you know this grid has the firm's brands as rows and the corresponding products as columns. Now what does it do? Let us let us try to decipher that you know we can characterize a firm's brand architecture strategy according to its breadth, its depth. Now what does what does breadth means here? In terms of brand product relationship with brand extension strategy. So, once you move ahead from left to right in terms of uh, adding on products to a brand and in its depth in terms of product brand relationship and the brand portfolio or mix. For example, a brand architecture strategy is both deep and broad if the firm has a large number of brands many of which have been extended into various product categories. I will just, just uh, you know decipher this for you but that, uh, just, just hold for a while. Now the rows of the matrix represent brand product relationship. They capture the firm's brand extension strategy in terms of the number and the nature of the products sold under its different brands. One name and probably different products may be related to each other, may be complementary to each other, but belonging to different lines in terms of product. And here when I say different lines, I should not refrain from suggesting that I talked about the relationship of product line with production line as such. Now, for example, a computer company puts up a computer for you and a printer for you and carries the same brand name for example. It is just an example but, but again the point is those products can be different in terms of their line but same in uh, terms of as far as their brand name goes. So a brand line consists of all the products original as well as line and category extensions. See line and category extensions sold under a particular brand name. Thus a brand line is one row of the matrix. And here one must note that a product line may include different brands that is precisely the point or a single family brand or individual brand that has been line extended. For example, category you talk about so soft drinks can be a category, jewelry can be a category, skin care can be a category, dental care can be a category and just to reminiscence that we have talked about this earlier. So here we are mentioning about category. Now you see we want to judge a potential new product extension for a brand on how effectively it leverages existing brand equity from the parent brand to the new product as well as how effectively the extension in turn contributes to the equity of the parent brand. So from you know we are moving from uh, an established uh, product in terms of being a brand and we want to extend that brand equity the, that brand power to the other products and as, as I said might be related or might be slightly diverse, might be closely associated and so on. It, it, uh, they, they may constitute a family as well for example you know a family of products. So category and family both and family uh, we always talk in terms of related products. Now given that product policy has been set for a firm in terms of product boundaries that is appropriate product categories and product lines then the proper branding strategy must be decided upon in terms of which brand elements should be used for which products. Now once you are moving from this side to that side you are introducing a product under a brand name. So there can be elements of the original brand or the first brand to be used in the extended products or, or extended brand extensions should I say the next product which would join this brand name. So it, it can differentiate the next product with you know some element which is a constituent 
or or let us say some addition to it you know kind of. So, decisions must be made as to which products to attach to any one brand as well as how many brands to support in any one product category. The former decision concerns brand extensions, the latter decision concerns brand portfolios. Now, here things you know will become more interesting for us. Now, again let us talk of columns. So, the columns of the matrix represent again the product brand relationships, but here it was brand product relationship. Now, here it is product brand relationship and they capture the brand portfolio strategy in terms of the number and nature of the brands to be marketed in each product category. So, here you have several brands under a product category. For example, you have a product category of skin care. Now, you may have several names, several brands for supporting that category under the same organization. That is what we are trying to understand. And on that side, we try to look at that one brand name traversing through different categories many a times. And then that is what uh, you know that is that is what the magic of this matrix is. And but what we are trying to understand here is that where to use the brand power, how to extend it, how to carry it forward. And then that is where architectural perspective comes in and imagination where this name, the element, the logo, the symbol, the slogan, the jingle where it would work and how it would create similarity, how it would capitalize upon its uh, you know strength and how it has to carry some differentiation while carrying itself ahead in terms of being a name and an element of a brand. And let us talk of portfolio now. So, the brand portfolio is the set of all brands and brand lines that a particular firm offers for sale to buyers in a particular category all the brand lines. So, at this moment remember lines going from left to right. Thus a brand portfolio is one column of the matrix and marketers design and market different brands to appeal from different market segments. So, here you know things become slightly complex, but to simplify that we have clear distinction in terms of let us say the pricing, the outlets or let us say marketing program associated with each brand even if it is an extension or you know otherwise. The point here is that we wish to capitalize upon the name and the strength and that is where architecture perspective comes in. Now, let us talk about brand portfolios. A brand portfolio includes all brands sold by a company in a product category. Brands can play a number of specific roles as part of a brand portfolio to attract for example, to attract particular market segment not currently being covered by the other brands of the firm or let us say to serve as a flanker and protect flagship brands, to serve as a cash cow and be milk for profits. For example, you have a premium brand and then you want a larger market to be uh, you know capitalized uh, because of that brand power and market is demanding for that, but, but you are slightly ahead of what they intend to spend. So, you come slightly you know down in terms of the price perspective, utilize the same brand uh, you know uh, value and offer a product which gels with this market the uh, you know the expectation of this market or the expectation of these customers. I have talked about you know it being a cash cow to serve as a low end entry level product to attract new customers to the brand franchise and attracting new customers and retaining the old ones is what brand is all about actually branding is all about because that is going to give you the value and that is going to generate the equity. Now, again there are other elements to it to serve as high end prestige product to add prestige and credibility to entire brand portfolio, to increase shelf presence and retailer dependence in the store, to attract consumers seeking variety who may otherwise have switched to another brand, to increase internal competition within the firm, 
to yield economies of scale in advertising, sales, merchandising and physical distribution. These are you know the objectives of a brand port portfolio should I say and look at this slide. So, this exemplifies everything. You have Toyota in front of you, there are segments on the horizontal axis should I say and then you have on, uh, uh, on the vertical axis you know you have attributes. So, you have you know target customers, value proposition, product, service, brand, price, distribution that is market offerings or marketing program as such. And then you know you have uh, 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 you know you, looking at the products you would just understand what we are talking of in terms of brand portfolio and how it is the part of brand architecture how it is also associated with brand architecture strategies. Someone is actually someone thought of steering this or someone kept on thinking in terms of developing this whole portfolio in due course of time while going to the customers asking what else they require looking at the competition looking at all the other environmental factors and so on. We have talked about this, but try to look at Toyota actually steering their way in almost you know for almost all types of customers and creating this whole portfolio around automotives. And then look at this Coca Cola. Sometimes you feel that we know Coca Cola by the name of Coca Cola or let us say Fanta or Coke, but if you will go into their story you would realize that they have a huge portfolio and someone definitely you know is or our group of people they are looking into that you know th this, this uh, uh, whole situation with an architect's perspective with a designer's perspective with the with the element of capitalizing upon the brand equity of coca cola which they have developed in due course of time with the, with it with a perspective of even the life cycle of a product and a brand life cycle perspective which we would be talking of uh, briefly at uh, you know at the later part of our discussions uh, almost near to the end so so this is how you know things are and then i take you back to Volkswagen example wherein you see at this moment you should be looking at this slide with reference to a portfolio. Earlier we were looking at this slide with reference to a strategic perspective a brand architecture strategy and here let us look at uh, this with the perspective of portfolio. Ultimately we are trying to understand brand architecture with a strategic orientation. And again just to reiterate in front of you the same slide from where we started. In my next uh, discussion I would be reaching to talk about uh, brand hierarchies then corporate branding and try to complete the picture with a similar kind of uh, examples, but reiterating Volkswagen I think two more times till then goodbye.